The easiest thing I've done was to get out from under the labels and to live the life that I live. The most difficult thing I've ever done was to believe that I can do it. Uh, the difference is that when you don't know what's impacting you, and it's, it's something that, that's holding you down and you're not aware of it, there are things that when you, in, in my situation, when you live in a dominant culture that is designed to destroy your sense of self and your belief in yourself. And, and you have to learn ways in which you can begin to connect with this power that you have within yourself to handle where you are. The key is to be constantly in a perpetual process of discovering the truth of who you are and fighting constantly to look for ways in which you can escape the inner conversation between ages zero and five. We determine what's available to us and what's not available to us. And so that was a defining moment. I knew there are certain things I could not do, certain places I could not go. They used to have signs on Miami Beach that said, Jews, dogs, and coloreds not allowed. And so now you have to operate within the constraints of, of the dominant society and the things that they've created for you. And it's a challenge to see yourself beyond that and to work to get outside of that even after those laws have changed because that has become so much a part of you, you unconsciously operate within the parameters of what has been put in place. Like you go, to, you're driving on the expressway, the four or five, and, and, and you'll get off on an exit that you weren't going in that direction, but you unconsciously did it because you've done it so many times that many people, because they're not making a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to think outside of what life has thrown at them, they end up doing the same thing over and over and over again. Einstein said that thinking that has brought me this far has created some problems that this thinking can't solve. And so through relationships, through reading, through studies, through goals and dreams beyond your comfort zone, it, it allows you to begin to live out of your imagination as opposed to out of your history. D Disney said, the imagination is a preview of what's to come. they have to expose themselves to something that will give them a different vision of themselves. And in addition to that, they have to put themselves in a community of what I call OQP, only quality people. A gentleman who dramatically transformed my life, I was a junior at Booker T. Washington High School in Miami, Florida. And I went in his class looking for another friend and and he said, go to the board and work this problem out for me. I said, sir, I can't do that. He said, why not? I said, uh, I'm not one of your students. He said, do it anyhow. And, and the other kids started laughing, saying, he's Leslie. He's DT. And he said, what's DT? He's, his brother is smart, but he's the dumb twin. And, and I said, I am, sir. And he came from behind his desk and he pointed at me. He said, don't you ever say that again someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. And he taught me three things. He said, if, if you want to become successful in life, young man, he said, number one, you got to change your mindset. He said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Number two, practice OQP, only quality people. You earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends. I found that out. I left all my bro broke friends. I say, y'all gotta go, because <laughs> I used to be so broke I pass the bank and trip the alarm, you know. <laughs> and the third thing he said: develop your communication skills, because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. He said those are three major things that you want to work on that will liberate you from living in Liberty City, living in poverty in Overtown. It will help to escape out of where you are right now because I see you watching me and I know you want more. I can see the hunger in your eyes.
You get hungry by finding something that's you. I believe that all of us are born unique, but most of us die copies. You got to find out what is it that turns you on, what resonates with you. Uh, one of the things that I realized and what allowed me to become successful as a speaker, the speaking industry has been hijacked by people who speak to sell, and it's, it's okay to do that and make money. I speak to change lives because somebody spoke and changed my life. So this is my passion. This is my drive. This is something that I feel in my heart. And and so the key to that hunger-driven life is a heart-centered life. I didn't do what I'm doing for years because of my programming, because of the culture in which I was raised in. I would see other people with with degrees and PhDs and and MBAs and credentials I don't have, and I convinced myself I couldn't do it. But Mr. Washington, on that day, we became friends, and and he taught me not only someone's opinion of you does does not have to determine your reality. He said that you have to work on yourself, and you have to have an unstoppable attitude, and no excuse is acceptable, and you've got to to make it a, a, a priority, a non-negotiable in your life, and hold a, a constant vision of what it is you want to achieve. See it accomplished, and go all out. Find a way to win, in spite of the setbacks, in spite of the disappointments, in spite of your failures. I, I tell people when I'm giving presentations, you will fail your way to success. I have a saying is life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. <laughs> and so those experiences of, of going after goals that's beyond your comfort zone and having relationships that will challenge you and surrounding yourself with coaches and mentors who can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself because you can't read the label when you're locked in the box. And so those experiences, they challenge you to go to that next level and continue to move forward in your life, doing new and exciting things that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you when you live a hard-centered life, deciding that you're going to live a life that will outlive you. You're going to live a life that counts, a life that will build a legacy and change the planet. You know, Harz Mann said, we should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. And so my goal is to make a, a major contribution to humankind. Every day when I get up, my mindset is, what is it that I can do to touch and impact somebody's life today. What is it? What does that look like? Don't live the life that has been given you. By the circumstances, by the people that's around you, that Sidney Poitier wrote a book called The Measure of a Man. And he said, when you go for a walk with someone, something happens without being spoken. He said, either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? And so there are things that we pick up and we think that they're our choices, but they're the choices that we've been programmed by life to, to do. I mean, we, when we leave our homes in the morning, we're bombarded with over 6,000 advertising hits through Facebook, through Twitter, through Instagram, through television, through our phones and through our communities uh, and through the computers. And so all of these things are impacting us every day. So if you don't have a program for your mind, then your mind is going to be programmed and you'll find yourself doing things that you did not know and, and that they affected you, that they, through marketing techniques and strategies that they will create a thirst within you. I came up in an era that said, if you built the best mousetrap, the world would be the path to your door. But if you know marketing, people will sleep outside your store to buy a telephone they've never touched or seen.